Hey everybody, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this ribbed crochet baby blanket. So for this afghan, it's a baby size and it uses three colors that you can see here. I used a total of seven and a half skeins. I used three skeins of purple. I used two skeins for the gray and two skeins of white. So because the purple was my main color, I used it the most, I, it took one more extra skein. I don't know if you guys remember, but if you've been following my channel for a while, you may remember the two poncho cowl hood thing that I made. I used this stitch for it and someone, but it was done in the round. And someone mentioned that I should make a blanket using this kind of design. So that's what I did. I'm going to show you how to do this stitch in rows so that you can make your own. And it's basically a repeat. So I'm going to be showing you uh, how to start it and then how to begin the repeat again. And then I'm going to show you how to do this border. And this border is very, very simple, but I wanted it to be a textured border because the whole blanket is so textured. So it's just a basic ribbed around the edge and everything. What you need to get started is a five millimeter hook or a size eight hook for the US and four ply for the US, 10 ply for Australia yarn and as many colors as you want. I noticed that uh, about every one of these sections, I used about one skein. And I see that I have three purple, uh, three purple strips and two white strips and two gray strips. So essentially, yeah, it took one skein per, because it's so textured, it take, it's a yarn eater. <laughs> so this is a baby blanket. Uh, the size that I got at the end was the length size was 35 inches or 90 centimeters and the width was 32 inches or 81 centimeters. And I got for the gauge about three stitches per inch or 2.5 centimeters. So go ahead and grab your, your yarn and let's get started. I'm going to start by showing you because this border is done at the end. So it's basically, I'm going to start you with the first row of the color. So pick your color that you want for the first strip. Okay, so the multiples of this stitch is four plus one. Really simple. So you just want to do in multiples of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And when you reach your desired size, then stop with the multiples of four and just do that plus one and then you'll be ready to begin row one. Okay, that's a, I think a good enough sample piece. So I did multiples of four. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my chain one and now I'm ready for row one. For the size afghan that I told you that I made, that one I showed you, I did a chain of 116 plus one. Or um, you can do uh, 116 double crochet foundation stitches and then skip to row two of the pattern. It's up to you. So for row one, we're going to double crochet in the third chain from our, from the hook. One, two, three, double crochet in the third chain from the hook. And then you want to double crochet in all your stitches down your chain. So continue to double crochet down your chain for row one. And when you get to the end, I will continue with you. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay. Remember I had for the small size blanket, 116 stitches plus one, and it'll always be like that. So if you make a bigger size and it's whatever number you have, before the plus one will be the amount of stitches that you should end with. So I had, I had 116 stitches plus one. And when you end this row, I should have 116 stitches. Now that ends row one. For row two, and for the entirety of this project, 
you will always chain two and turn. You always begin with a chain two. So for row two, we're going to chain two and turn. Now we're going to have uh, what I call border row stitches. So you're never going to do a back post double crochet in the very first post. And you're not going to do a back post double crochet in the ending chain. Only the stitches in between. These two will always be considered uh, the border stitches. So the beginning will always be a chain two and you will always double crochet in your ending chain two to end your row. So for row two, so not the first post, but the second post of the row, you're going to yarn over and you're going to do a back post double crochet. Then you want to continue to do back post double crochet, which is going in between, pushing that post back and doing a double crochet. You're essentially going in through one space and then going into the next to push that post back. Okay, I'm coming to my last two stitches. So I'm going to do my last back post double crochet. Then I'm going to work a double crochet in the top of my ending chain. And that will end row two. So that was row two. So for row three, and like every row, you're going to chain two and turn. Now for row three, it's just going to be regular double crochets. The chain two counts as your first stitch, so in the second stitch of the row, you're going to start double crocheting. So do one double crochet in all your stitches, including your chain two at the end of your row. So continue to do that and I'll see you at the end of row three. Okay, so for the end of row three, you are going to double crochet in your ending chain two. And then as always, chain two and turn. And again, a reminder, you'll never use the, the chain two counts as a stitch. So you're never gonna put anything in that first stitch. And also you're never gonna front post or double crochet in the last stitch. Having said that, for row four, the pattern is two front post double crochets and then two back post double crochets. So we're going to yarn over and in the second post of the row, we're going to pull that up and work a double crochet on it. And that's how you do a front post double crochet. Yarn over, do that again for the next post, pull that up and double crochet. So that's two front post double crochets. Then yarn over and on the post, you'll put two back post double crochets in a row. Just like you did with the two front post, then the next stitch will be two back post. Then you're going to repeat that. That's why the multiples are four, because you're going to have two and two. So you repeat that for the row. Next two will be front post double crochets. And then the next two stitches after that will be back post double crochet. And you want to continue that down your whole row. And again, at the very last stitch, you'll double crochet in your ending chain two. So I have my last three stitches here, just a two back post double crochets. So my ending will be two front post double crochets and then I'm going to double crochet in the top of my ending chain two. And that will end row four. With rows four through ten you should have seven total rows of the back post and front post double crochets. So we just finished row four. I wanted to grab a color that would stick out. So even though it looks like you've done two rows it's only one because uh, this previous one was a, just a double crochet row, remember? But when you start to push that post forward to do a front post double crochet, uh, it pushes the previous double crochet row forward too, which is awesome, but it makes it difficult uh, to count. You, you can lose count 
uh, easily. So on this last front post double crochet that you did, go ahead and mark that because you're going to be repeating for rows 4 through 10 this front post back post thing. So you know that that I, I just and here I go, I'm almost messing up. It's this stitch. See, I almost put it on the previous one. And this is why a stitch marker is important. You want to make sure you mark the fourth row, which is the very last row that you did and not the previous one. So this is row four, and then now you'll have row five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, which will give you seven rows total. The next, uh, on the pattern it says rows five through ten, so six rows, because we already did one. So total seven. So for uh, the next six rows, you're going to be always chain two and turn. So for row five, for instance, we did, we ended with front row. So facing it this direction, their back post. You want to always go with the flow. So we, it's back post this row, and these are front posts because they're sticking forward. So you want to back post on your back post, and you'll always front post on your front post. So these first two stitches will be back post. So these are front post, the next two. So I will do front post on these next two. Ah, get in there. Then the next two are back post, so I'm going to do back post on those. So it's just a matter of just going with the flow. So continue to do that back post on your back, two back post and front post on your two front post. And you'll be doing this for six more rows. So you have this marker here. So this is five. So finish row five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So after row ten, come back here, and uh, we'll continue together. Okay, I just finished the last stitch on row ten, and it may be easier to count the places in between where you have these little ripples here. So you can count one, which is row four, two, which is row five, three, four, five, six, seven. So you should have seven little ripples here, or you can count starting from row four and pick up the post itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it's basically a repeat between your seven rows of doing a front and back post double crochet. You will have what we did at the very beginning, which is a row of double crochets, which is row one. Then a row of back post double crochets, which was row two, and then another row of double crochets, which was row three. So those three border rows will always be done like that. So row 11, you'll chain two, and you'll keep the same color that you have here, and then start double crocheting from the second stitch of the row because chain two always counts as your first. And again, you're going under both loops of the stitch and you're doing regular double crochets. Whoops. So you'll be putting a double crochet in each stitch until you get to your very last stitch and then you'll put a double crochet in your ending chain two. So I just double crocheted in my ending chain two and this is normally where I would change my colors but this is my tutorial yarn and I don't want to cut it. So I'm just going to grab my next color here. Okay, because this is my tutorial uh, yarn, I don't want to cut it. So what I would normally do is I would cut my yarn here and then you work your, tap, uh, your, <laughs> your tail in later with a tapestry needle. Do the same with your yarn you're adding. Leave a bit of a tail so you can work it in later with a tapestry needle. Okay, then you want to chain two 
and turn. Now for, this is row Thirteen. Row thirteen. You're going to be doing front post double crochets. So in your second stitch of your row, because your chain two is always going to be a border row stitch, you're going to be putting front post double crochets all the way down your row. And I'm realizing that I did this backwards. I did back post here, I should have done front post. It was probably when I began, I didn't, I wasn't marking my afghan, so I probably had an extra row and I was probably like this on this side whenever I started this row that I'm doing now, but now that I'm marking it, I know exactly which row I'm on. Oh well. Not that big a deal. If it's a bigger deal of a, for you, then you, maybe you can do one more row of this before you start your previous row. And then you'll be on track. Oh, I'm already doing front post, back post. Just front post. And as you do all your front post down this row, you're making that border on the back which now is what really matters because you can see it because of the color. And front posts are so much easier to do than back post. So I'm going to stick with the front post. And I'm going to stick with marking every single row because that was part of uh, the design process that I learned was very important. So I'm getting to my last few stitches here. This is my last double crochet. And then single crochet in that ending chain two. Then you want to chain two and turn. For row 13, you're going to be doing just regular double crochets. So starting in the second stitch of the row, because remember the chain two counts as the first stitch. So second stitch of your row for row 13, just put one double crochet in all your stitches. And this is always what the border row consists of. Consists of one double crochet done in your, your color, and then a front post double, then you'll change your color, and then you'll do a front post double crochet row and then a double crochet row. So essentially you have double crochet, front post double crochet, double crochet between all your colors well, during your blend to change colors. In other words, what I call these three are border rows in between. You only have one out of the three rows that are the current color that you're on and then you'll change and do your front post and then your row of double crochet. I hope that made sense because it's made to make it easier to separate it out in your brain because you'll be doing this quite a lot. Okay, I'm getting to my last few stitches here. This is my chain two. Okay, that's row 13. So now it's going to uh, start to repeat rows 4 through 13. And I'm just going to take you to start. So this is going to be a repeat of row 4. So chain 2 and turn. And again, you want to line up whatever you have down here to here. And I have two, I start with two front posts here. So I'm going to have two front posts on this side as well. And then you'll have two back posts. Then alternate that, two front posts, two back posts. And remember, after this row, 
always after row four or the repeat of row four, you want to mark that row that you just finished doing, just like we did before. So at the end of this row, make sure that you, you mark. Okay, I just got to the end of my row. And remember, after this first front and back post row, mark this very last row that you did and that last front post. Now you're going to do exactly what you did here. You're going to do seven rows total. So you already did one, so you need to do six more rows of going two front, two back. And remember, always chain two, go with the flow. And then once you get your seven done, seven rows done, keeping with this color, you're going to do a row of double crochets. And then you will cut and switch to the next color whatever it's going to be and then you're going to do your front post double crochets and then another row of double crochets and then you're going to repeat this last row we just did again don't forget to mark so let me go ahead and get set up and I will show you how to do the border of this okay when you repeat those total of seven rows you count starting from here one two three four five six seven so I have seven rows of this back and forth. Then you'll chain two and turn. And now the next row is starting the second stitch is just double crochets. Now normally after this row of double crochets you would change colors but since I'm going to be showing you how to end the afghan. It'll be like the first row where you're not changing colors but you're still going to do the border row, border rows, those three rows I'm talking. I always tell you about the double crochet row, the front post double crochet row, and the double crochet row but this time we're not going to be changing colors. So the row I'm doing now is repeat of row 12. Working with this thicker yarn can really be tiring on your, your arms, that's for sure. And it's worsted weight. Okay. Last few stitches here. Double crochet and ending chain two. That was a repeat of row 11. Row 12 is when we would usually change colors, but this time for row 12, since we're going to be ending our afghan, you want to chain two and turn. So when you get to the end of your afghan and you're not going to be changing colors again, you want to do a row of front post double crochets in the same color. No changing colors this time. So do your row of front post double crochets and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, I just did my last front post. Now I'm going to single crochet, I mean double crochet in the ending chain two. Well, I'm getting tired. Okay, so, so to end the row as well, I'm going to finish, finish the border. So this is a repeat of row 13, which is the end of the repeat when you want to continue this uh, regularly it's repeating uh, rows 4 through 13 but just remember when you're ending just like I am now the afghan you don't want to change colors you'll be just sticking with you'll still do the repeat you just won't change colors so continue to do that last row here double crochets and then I'm going to show you how to do the border so I just finished my last row and now I'm ready to start the border. Normally I would cut my yarn and change it, but since this is my tutorial yarn, I really don't want to cut it. So choose whatever color that you want to use for your border and choose any corner, which is going to be the space between the first and, and last stitch. So you can choose here or down here, wherever you want to start. 
just choose the space in between the last two stitches. So I'm going to pretend that I did that. I'm going to go ahead and just chain one. And I'm going to double crochet. You want to double crochet three in the corner. So one, two, three. And you'll always double crochet three in any corner. And then the rest of your stitches will be double crochet stitches. But just keep in mind that you are doing double crochets. So each double crochet should have two stitches in it because that's essentially two. So this first area, which is my chain two, I'm going to make sure I put double crochet in each one of those stitches. Then my double crochet here. Next double crochet here will be two double crochets. Then I'm going to find my next side stitch and put double crochet. Let me get a little closer for you just in case you're having difficulty seeing. Grab up the next double crochet and put two double crochets in it. And you'll be doing this all the way around your project. And again, you'll be doing two double crochets in each of your side stitches until you get to this last, until you get to this corner between those two stitches, and you'll put three double crochets in between there. And then, of course, you do your, your side, I mean your stitches on the underside, one in each stitch. Also the top, you'll be doing one in each stitch. It's only the actual side of your stitch that you'll be putting two double crochets on the side of each one of your double crochets here. So just keep continuing down your side and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so if you notice there's a lot of pulling and ruffle looking, but it's because all this is pulling and it's tight, but as your blanket gets used, and especially after you wash it, it really, it starts to lay uh, a lot flat, <laughs> a lot flatter than this big thick yarn is showing right now especially when you use a worsted weight yarn. So anyway, I did three double crochets in this corner stitch, and then now I'm using the bottom stitches. And you're just going to want to put one double crochet in each of your bottom stitches. And then when you get to the end, between these two stitches, you'll put your three double crochets You'll go down the side, just like we just did, and then since this is three double crochets at the end, you won't need to put one in the last. Just go down the side stitches, and then I'll show you how to end your row and start the repeat of uh, the, the row two, which will be the repeat. Okay, I'm coming to my last corner. I forgot since uh, I started here. I have one more corner here on the side I need to do. Okay, then I'm at the top. So now I'm going to just put one double crochet in all my top stitches. Oops. And then I'll get to the very end of my row here. This is the, the three in the corner, three double crochets going to skip that chain one there and just slip stitch in that first double crochet or if you started with the chain three and two double crochets just in your beginning stitch slip stitch and then you have your first row of your border okay so for row two 
you want to chain two and you're going to do a front post in the very first stitch and then you're going to do a back post and that's essentially what you're going to do all the way around got a front post and then back post and you should even out at the very end with the equal stitch and we're not adding any stitches from here on out we're going to create our front post and back post all the way around and then uh, for row three which is going to be our last row I'm getting really tired so I'm going to go ahead and just show you real quick so you're, you're just going to do that all the way around you'll slip stitch in the beginning stitch and then the last row which is row the, I should say the repeat which is row three so you'll end up here which is the beginning stitch which is your your first front post double crochet that you did so again you'll go ahead and chain two and then you'll front post double crochet and your front post double crochet and then you'll just back post on on your back post double crochet you won't be adding or subtracting any number and by doing this it's going to flatten out this like what you would call a warpy outside because since you're not adding or subtracting any stitches on the outside it'll actually straighten out your whole afghan and it'll make it look uh, a lot more flat but there's a limit because then it will start causing issues so you can't make this border row uh, very many rows so you can see how it starts to look the repeat row is row three so you're doing front post double crochets in your front post double crochets back post double crochets in your back post double crochets and let me grab my piece and I did this all the way around so this would have been row one row two so I only did three rows so completing this third row here will be the end and you'll just slip stitch in the beginning front post double crochet that you did and then you'll injure your border I only did uh, those three rows I started thinking about doing a fourth maybe a fifth but then uh, the fact that I wasn't adding any corner stitches it actually started bending here on the corners and I thought okay no it's good it's fixed whatever stretch that was happening and as you can see my pattern is relaxed it lays flat it also helps that it's worsted weight yarn and not this thick ply yarn that I'm using but it looked good it looked flat and again I would change colors every third row and I finished my afghan using the same color that I began with just to have it more of an even look but this one goes from purple to white to gray and then when I ended it was after the white I did gray and then purple so I had purple next to my gray here and white next to my purple here and I still think it looks great take a look at the photos and everything and you can make your decision this side is the side that doesn't have the ripple I mean the border row and this is the side that does it adds so much more texture to put that border row in it so I definitely recommend that you don't skip on that so that is it guys I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please don't forget to like and share and subscribe it helps me out so much and if you want to keep you know in touch with uh, what's coming out with me you can sign up to my newsletter I post once a week on Sundays 
uh, whenever the new thing comes out, either it's a it's going to be a roundup or it's going to be a new pattern. I usually alternate every other week. And that's it, guys. I hope that you'll sign up and we'll stay in touch. Until then, have a wonderful day. Oh, almost forgot. I want to tell you, I'm also on Pinterest. Very important. I'm pretty active on Pinterest. So if you like Pinterest too, you can find that link down below and you can join my board there. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.